Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, I'm gonna to build this cool bench made from some really nasty reclaimed wood. To build this project, I started off with the crustiest, most beat up pieces of wood that I can find that are still solid. Now, I think this one here may have been a fence post at one time. I'm not quite sure. It's really cracked and split. And this large chunk here, I don't even know where that came from. It's just something that I picked up. I don't know, it could have been on the side of the road for all I know. But they're both really crusty, and I'm gonna see if we can do something cool with them. Now I've had these pieces of wood sitting around for quite a while, because even though they're really rough, and part of them are rotted away, I really thought it might make a cool project, and might be kind of fun just to see what kind of results we can get. I'll begin by cutting the worst piece off of this chunk that I think was a fence post. The wood smells a lot like pine when I cut it. I don't really see any indications that it could be treated, but just in case, I think I'll wear a respirator when running it through the planer. I'm not concerned with my blades because my blades are already shot. There's nicks on both sides. The blades have already been flipped around and they definitely need to be replaced before I use them for something nice. So since I'm not worried about trashing them, I'm gonna just finish them off on this project. If you didn't want to risk ruining your planer blades, you could for sure start cleaning it up using a hand plane, even some sandpaper, just to get some of the bulk of the material off. Before I plane the post, I'm gonna knock off a bit of the rounded edge using a hand plane. That's just so I can pass it through the planer somewhat square. The wood is so checked and dried that I can't really get a nice long shaving. It's cleaning up all right though. Then all of a sudden, a spring snowstorm came in and I had to rush through this process and get this board flattened. I wasn't able to get any good footage at this point because I didn't want the camera out in the snow. Well, that process really didn't work out as well as I thought. I ended up just roughly flattening one side of this board and then running it through the thickness planer to flatten the other side. I ended up having to readjust a few spots with the hand plane and then run it back through the planer and I got it pretty square just wasn't as smooth as I thought it was gonna be. I can tell right away that this piece of wood is not near as old as it looked. Now that it's cleaned up, it really looks like kind of a construction grade six by six or something like that. And it may very well have been. Again, I don't know the origin of it, but definitely is not old. The grain is really large and it smells like construction grade lumber to me. I'm not really concerned with that. I'm gonna use this for the project anyway. Now I can cut this piece down for the four legs. I'm using the miter gauge on the table saw for this step because the board is too thick to use on my crosscut sled. Before I move any further, I want to address these cracks and splits in both the legs and the seat of this bench. So I'm going to fill those with epoxy. I've got some two-part epoxy resin. I'm going to mix some of that up. This one in particular is a two-to-one mix. So I've got this glass jar. I'm going to put some masking tape on here. That way I can use my tape measure and make some marks on the side of the jar to know exactly where I need to fill the epoxy to. For a little added fun, I'm gonna dump in some stone dust to kind of give this a different color. And now I'll just start filling the cracks. Now I see why everybody likes the, uh, the river tables. There's something kind of fun about pouring epoxy all over wood. I forgot to close up the end of the crack, so I threw some duct tape on really quick just to close it off. And 
After that epoxy's dry, I'll take the piece, flip it over, and I'll pour the epoxy on the other side. I'm using some duct tape and some hot glue to make a little dam on each end of the piece. This is so the epoxy doesn't run out the cracks. I'm not too worried if this makes a mess because I'm going to trim off the ends anyway. And now begins the sanding process. The first time over I'm using 60 grit paper just to remove the bulk of the material. My main goal is to expose the low spots so that I can go back in and touch them up. This time I put the stone dust in the low spots and poured the clear epoxy over it. Now with most of the low spots filled and things are looking pretty good, I'm going to continue sanding with 60 grit, progressing up through the grits, ending at 220. Now I'll use my circular saw to trim off the ends. The blade doesn't go all the way through the piece, so I'll finish the cut with a handsaw. So right now I have most of the sanding complete. I've got just a few spots where some bubbles formed in the epoxy that I need to touch up, but I'm gonna do that a little bit later. Right now, I'm gonna mark out and cut the spots where the legs are gonna to attach to the bench. I'm just gonna put the leg into place, making sure it's flush with the edge of the bench, and I'm gonna trace around the outside. Then I'll transfer those marks around to the top of the bench so that I have lines on both sides. Then I'm just gonna use a handsaw and remove that waste. This process turned out to be quite awkward and a little bit time consuming, but I just repeated the same steps that I did for the first leg on all four corners. I'm not going to bore you with me cutting all four of those corners, but let's just say I had extensive work to do with a chisel to get the joints squared up. Well now I finally have those notches fitting the legs pretty well. I'm going to attach the legs to the base using epoxy and this walnut dowel. I need to drill some holes through the legs so that I can run the dowel into the seat of the bench and attach everything securely. Yeah, it's gonna make a mess. That's all right. I'm going to use this band clamp to help secure everything just a little bit more. Hey, that's like really square. Before the epoxy starts to set up, I'm going to wrap the bottom of the legs with a little bit of tape and drizzle some epoxy in there. That's going to seal it up really well against the elements. This seals off the wood from any moisture wicking up through the end grain. Now I can't say when or where this idea originated from, but I do want to give credit where credit is due. I first learned of this idea a while back, and it was in a post by the Wood Whisperer, so I do want to say thank you very much, Mark, for sharing this idea. I think it's awesome. Now that the legs are epoxied in place, I don't want to rely on just the epoxy, so I'm going to chop up some pieces of this walnut dowel to use as pins to hold the legs. There's really something cool about using an old tool, especially one that was used by your dad or your grandpa or something like that, some kind of family member that you know used it for something to build lots of cool things. This is one of those. Now it's time for the final sanding. I'm gonna start with a 60 grit to level out the epoxy and work my way up to 220.
Once I'm done with the random orbit sander, it's just a little bit of hand sanding to break the corners so they're not quite so sharp, and then it's on to the finish. Speaking of the finish, I'm gonna apply several coats of this spar urethane. In my experience with spar urethane is it works pretty well, but you have to maintain it. It's definitely not a apply it and forget it kind of finish, especially for outdoor uses. You need to follow the instructions on the can and reapply as you start to see the finish deteriorating because in my experience, it's definitely going to, at least once a year, you're gonna to need to reapply this in most cases. I'm just gonna use a brush and apply several coats all over the entire surface of this bench. As soon as the finish has had some time to dry, I can park the bench outside and relax in the shade. I'm pretty pleased with the way this thing turned out. I like the look of the colored epoxy in these deep cracks. I can see a few spots where I, maybe I didn't mix the epoxy all that great, so it's not completely blended, and that's really just a mistake on my part. Since this is the first time that I've used epoxy for this kind of application, I'm not too concerned. I'm gonna just chalk that up to a learning experience. Overall, I really like the way it looks. So just in case you're curious, some of the supplies I used, the epoxy was this System 3 epoxy. I picked it up at my local Woodcraft. My first time using this epoxy, and overall I think it works really well. I did notice that the set time on it is really long. You've got a lot of time to work with, which can be a benefit or a negative, depending on your application. For mine, it worked out okay, although it took forever for it to dry. It was a good six to eight hours before this stuff was set up to where I can even start sanding or anything like that. So this project took a lot longer than I originally thought because when I had to do a pour, I had to basically wait the rest of the day before I could do anything. So it took several days for me to get everything filled in and let the epoxy dry. So depending on your time frame, that may or may not be an issue, but I do want to point it out. For the finish, I just used this Minwax Spar Urethane. You can pick it up all over the place, big box stores, you can buy it online. If you're interested in trying it out, I'll put a link down below in the description. Now this, in my experience, in weather conditions and all that temperature, humidity, all play a factor in how quickly it dries, but I found that this starts to set up and kind of get gummy really fast. Typically, I'll put on an application and then I'll try to go back and do long brush strokes to smooth everything out. But by the time I got back to those long brush strokes, it was already starting to get a little bit gummy and I ended up making it worse than it already was before I tried to smooth it out. So, something else to keep in mind, my experience with this is you have to kind of work quickly. Now, I suppose you could probably thin this out with maybe some mineral spirits or something like that. I have not tried it but it does say that you can clean it up with mineral spirits, so I kinda think that if you wanted to thin it, you could do that, which may give you a little bit better results. But overall, worked out just fine. We'll see how the durability goes as the months progress into summer and finally into fall and winter, but I am anticipating already that uh, maybe this fall I'll put another coat on just to keep it protected going into winter. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. Down below, you'll find links to my social media and to my website, homebuiltworkshop.com, where if you can pick up some t-shirts and stickers if you're interested. If you're not interested, you can still check it out anyway. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Probably should have gloves for this, but guess what I don't have? I'm gonna be covered in epoxy. This is gonna be fantastic. When I'm mixing up epoxy, I kinda try to grab about anything I can find that'll work for what I'm trying to do. This time, tin can. Yes, I know, this is not the most elegant application of an adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. 
Oh man, that's really square. I'm impressed. I'm really glad this stuff doesn't splash. <laughs> I'd have it even on me worse than I already do. There is epoxy everywhere <laughs> from this project. <laughs> Whew, man. Just finished wrapping up the video for this project. This was a really long project. It took a lot longer than I thought. Between waiting for epoxy to dry and waiting for finish to dry, it took a while. It probably, it, ah. <laughs> if it's not epoxy, now how did I get that on me? It was a little bit on the lip of the can and I just leaned in it. Ah, oh well. <laughs>